This is Rob Peary with the Coffee Runs Deep podcast, where we interview coffee farmers, coffee roasters, and we share their stories. I truly hope you enjoy the experience. Welcome to the Coffee Runs Deep podcast. I'm your host, Rob Peary. And today we have a special guest on, Andre Catalan Soares from Brazil, and he is a coffee hunter. And uh, Andre, how you doing, yeah. dude? I'm here and very uh, pleasure for me to be here with you. I appreciate that, Andre. Tell me a little about yourself and then let's kind of dive into what a coffee hunter is. Um, it's kind of one of them terms I, I don't really, I didn't hear too much about when I first got into coffee and now I'm kind of seeing it a little bit more. Well, coffee hunter is the person that tries to find the best coffee that he, he can find whenever he needs to go. Like... In the top of a big mountain, you have to escalate to go there. Deep on the country, you have to get a boat, motorcycle, plane. He goes there to find the best coffee that he can find and be the perfect cup of coffee. So I do this in here in Brazil. So is that like a business that y'all have that y'all do that with? Or do you do... Or do you have like a, another business model that you maybe also have a farm roast or something like that and do that as well? Or how's that yeah, work? I have a little farm here in Brazil, in the southeast of the Brazil, in a region called uh, Matas de Minas. It's like forest from Minas. Uh, it's a very unique place that grows coffee, like uh, terroir, very specific. And it uh, makes the, the coffee splendid. Everyone who tastes coffee from here, they always ask, it's from Matas de Minas, right? We can see that in the cup. So it's a very good place. We have a very good terroir here. But it's very small business, uh, very little farm. I have like 5,000 uh, coffee trees planted in my place uh, and uh, I have neighbors my left neighbor they have like like 300 just a small put a small area from uh, from the left left side the right side like they have one million coffee trees one million the, one million Jeez. in the front we have uh, half a million coffee trees planted. In all over the place is like mountain coffees. Yeah, that's what I've kind of like heard about like Brazil. Like, so y'all have some huge farms. A lot of the other farmers I've spoken with from like Guatemala and Ecuador, like the, the farms are pretty small, you know, yeah. hectare wise. The difference, the most different between those countries and Brazil that we have large farmers. And also we have companies that they have farms. And they use their farms to try to uh, uh, test their product in the farm to see that how it goes. Like if you have a disease in the coffee, the coffee tree, how to uh, uh, heal, heal it. If you have uh, any problem in the coffee, how to make it grow faster, how to make to produce more. So we have that. Uh, also, we have a partnership between big producers and institutes. We have one big institute here in Brazil. It's called uh, EAC, Institute Agro Agropecuary of Campinas. It's the uh, second biggest city of the state of Sao Paulo. The first one is uh, Sao Paulo. The second one is Campinas. And who created this institute was the second Brazil emperor, Pedro II. Oh, wow. How long ago was that? 17th century. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's been a long time then. A long time. Gotcha. And we have, from this uh, uh, institute, also we have another one. It's called Embrapa. Uh, it's like a Brazilian pecuary and agriculture uh, in a company, like something like that. It belongs to the, the federal government. 
and we have one institute of the of this kind in each state of Brazil, and they study how to produce more and better and less and, 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 uh, less. I don't know if I say less in a smaller space. Got you. You got okay. You. So basically, growing more coffee on less land. Yeah, but it, 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 the in Grappa, it's also not for the on the coffee. All kinds of crop, corn, beans, uh, coconut, everything. Acai, you know acai? I've heard of the acai bowls or whatever, but I, I've never really yeah. tasted it too much. Yeah, never tasted it. it's very interesting. I'm gonna try. Uh, it. And these institutes help. Also, the, 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 the big farmers, small farmers, how they could improve the production of coffee. Is that free or do they have to kind of like pay for that uh, research and knowledge? Or is it kind of something that like the institutes kind of just give as a... The, the, when you are invited by the institute, you it's free. Gotcha. When you call them, if, if you want to do only for you, you pay a little amount, less than a hundred dollars. Oh wow! Amount. Okay. But if you also invite them, invite a, a like a group of farmers or a, a school that studies uh, agriculture, it's going to be free because you are opening your farm to let them also learn with you how to produce better. Gotcha. So what's y'all's elevation there around where kind of you're at? No, 2,829 meters. Okay, so y'all about, are about 2,800 meters up then around where, where you're at? Yeah, that like okay. is. We are near the third biggest mountain of Brazil. Up gotcha. there, it makes uh, less uh, 12 below zero. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, very interesting to go there. If you want to feel like Americans feel when they need the winter. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so but as we far have as... also places in Brazil, different terroirs that it less and when also bigger than that. Yeah, we say pretty... here in Brazil that when you are near the equatorial line, it doesn't have, uh, it, it has to be bigger. Well, like south think. of the equator? That, yeah, south of yeah. the equator, you don't have to be that much. Like in the state of Paraná, it has very good coffees. It's less than a thousand meters. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, the closer there, you get to the equator, um, what you're kind of saying is you should be higher elevation for, yes. for growing coffee. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So as far as like y'all's like production and picking and stuff like that, like a few of the other farmers I've talked to in like Guatemala and Honduras and stuff, it seems like it's a very manual process. Is Brazil like that too? Or do y'all have like more mechanized machinery and stuff like that? Brazil is have more me mechanized ways to uh, pick up the, 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 the beans. The idea of specialty coffee starts in Brazil like uh, year 2000, 2002. Everyone always think that uh, we always pick up the beans like this. It, does, it doesn't have to change our way to produce better coffee. So we have to try to make them learn and see that it's different when you pick the beans by hand and choosing the, the nitrate one. And then it's very slow process because the, the farmers, they are old and they, I don't know how to say in that in English, when we say that the people doesn't like to change the way they do. No, yeah, they just, they get stuck in their ways pretty much. Like, yeah. yeah. You can come with the great idea and say to them that it will increase the value of the coffee. They say, no, I don't believe you. We never done that. Why it's different like from you. You are like 18 years old. You don't know nothing about coffee. I worked with coffee like 30 years. Yeah. You know, it's different. Gotcha. Uh, and the most part of here where I live, we can't use machines because it's very, uh, how to say, uh, hills. 
very steep. Yeah, they're like yeah. steep and stuff. Yeah. And the machines doesn't work. We have a, like uh, a machine, you know, those, those kind of uh, how you, you cut the grass. Yeah, like and, lawnmowers and stuff. Yeah, the mowers. Yeah. Yeah. We change the 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 the, the, the mowers like that and put like a, a hand. It's called here hand. And it does like this. So you put in the coffee tree, do this, and make all kinds of the beans fall in the ground that has like a big bag protecting the ground from the not to not fail like in the dirt. Yeah, I think I've and seen that. So y'all put like a big round net under the tree, and then that hand yeah. comes in and shakes the tree, and all the yeah. cherries just basically fall into the net. Exactly. And then do y'all have to sort out after that, like you know, basically the right ones from the green and all that? We do. So we, we, we wash the, the beans. We separate the, those ones who float. Float, yeah. And the, the ones that go to the, the, the deep. And also we have machines, very unique machines, that are also developed in Japan that can calibrate the mass of the, the, bring, the, the, the beans and also the color and when it passes through the uh, 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 a computer that has like a, a laser sensor, yeah, it goes every type of bean, the red one from the green one, from the one that are oh, already bad already, and it go like this. Wow, that's crazy. So real quick, so the ones that float, that's the ones you don't keep, right? And that's the ones that are probably not ripe. Or vice well, versa. The, the one that floats, we also use them, but not as going to be as a, a special coffee. Gotcha. So it's like more but commodity grade that. coffee or whatever. Yeah, we use it from a different uh, type of coffee, like a blend from another. Like a, we also have a bit, very good farm that produces a robusta con uh, long. And we mix those two to make very good coffee, very unique coffees. I didn't realize that. So how much um, how much robusta do y'all grow down there? Uh, we have only two states producing that. It's the state of Nina, it's the state of Espirito Santo. It's very near here where I am, like two hours from the car, my car. And the other one is in Rondonia, it's the very north of Brazil. And in the deep of the Amazon forest. Oh, wow. Okay. It's very cool. Also, indigenous people are producing it. Oh, it's crazy. Amazing. It's uh, very, very <laughs> good. Uh, and th there are not much of those coffee because uh, it even can't count like we are producers because Vietnam produces much more than us. But I would say like uh, two or two, three million bags of 60 kilos. Okay. Gotcha. There's not, not that much. Yeah. Not not compared to y'all's Arabica that y'all put out. Yeah. But it, it starts to, to uh, also be treated by like a special coffee. We have not uh, uh, we have the key grader right to evaluate right. The, the special coffee and we have here also the r grader robusta grader that's evaluate the gotcha. coffee that is robusta and some of them are very great coffees and when you drink you can if you're not a specialist you can get confused like really it's robusta it's like a very good uh, I love it. Yeah, I've tried. Dirty. I roasted some robusta here a while back. I think from um, I think it was from Indo in India or Indonesia or one of those places. And um, yeah, I I, I I didn't like it at all. So I've been wanting to kind of try some more just to see if I can find one that I actually actually like. So if you want, I can try to send you from Brazil. Yeah, I'll definitely hit you up. Not, I mean, I, I definitely don't mind paying. I, do y'all have like FedEx and stuff? Like, how does we have, we have, we have all those kind of things. Okay, it's, cool. It's uh, office, UPS office, DHL office. We have all those. Okay, 
so as far as like y'all's money and stuff down there, like what's, what's y'all's exchange rate to us? Is it pretty favorable or, or how, how does that kind of look? It's about uh, $1 is like five reais. Okay. And so like yeah. for a, a bag of coffee down there, like what, what would you yeah, probably be paying? Net, and I can show you. I saw on the, the um, Friday the, the prices of the coffees that they are like commodities, like um, bad commodity coffee to a very like fine cup. Right. The prices are between $1,800 and $67 to $235 and 34, $32. Gotcha. 60 kilos. Okay. Uh, and you, and you, if you show them there's a real fine cup, it's between 300 to $350. Gotcha. Okay. They like that. Okay. That's not too bad then. No, um, it's not. but it, the prices are very different from two years ago. Like this price would be half of it. Yeah, because y'all had those fires and stuff here a while back, didn't y'all? What was it? Fires, um, or drought? Was it a drought? We have fires, but fires is the uh, in the, the side of Brazil that don't have coffee. Gotcha. Okay. It would be like in Pantanal, in a, a part of Amazon. They say that the, uh, uh, most of the fire is made by men because men want to create more uh, uh, space for the cows, but it's not true. Few of them are like that because we also use like in Brapa, in Brapa that I told you that uh, institute that Brazil have, we also study how to produce more meat in a, a confined space. Gotcha. That's we we are the, the the country that most sells country or most sells uh, meat around the world. Few yeah, of them they use uh, the, the, the 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 idea that we have to put fire to create more space for our cows, but few of them do that. And the fire fire is more about the lighting because it's very uh, very. The, dip, the opposite of humidity is very uh like yeah um just basically hot like a like a warmer climate like yeah like desert, warmer. desert type yeah low humidity so the, the 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 weather is like like you you can't sweat gotcha very very hot one lightning it, it make a fire gotcha the most uh, uh thing that prejudices the farmers here in Brazil, especially in salt of Minas Gerais, is the pale. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we have that problem because it's very hot in Sao Paulo because it's a big city. Gotcha. In, in Minas Gerais, it's more like uh, less big cities and more uh, uh, nature environment. Okay. In, in cultures, it makes like a th uh, uh, thunderstorm very huge very bad and makes the the, the 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 weather change so completely crazy and like how you say it again the the, the the hail the hail yeah destroys destroy all the the, the the crop of any kind of crop not just coffee yeah, not just coffee like uh, soil or also uh corn uh Everything you can imagine in that area will be destroyed. Yeah. So whenever y'all sell y'all's like coffee and stuff, um, do you do you team up with a I guess an importer exporter down there, or um, is it and and how does it get like to the United States? We have uh, very big companies that buy the coffees from also the little farmers and also the big farmers. But when a, a big company has built, uh, a farm that, like I said to you, it, it tests their uh, products in the farm and it makes a very good amount of coffee, uh, 
uh, they use them. Uh, uh, they have also uh, offices in other countries in Europe, the United States, and they make the all the stuff they have to make to send the coffee to those countries. Gotcha. When is the small uh, farmer? They go to a company that export coffees and they exchange uh, numbers and try to negotiate a price for, for each uh, bag. And then when it's completely okay, we do with that, we will buy from you. They send the coffee, the bags, and that company will have all the headache to make the the company, the, the coffee goes whatever it needs to go. Because the bureaucracy here in Brazil, it's very hard, very difficult. Gotcha. So so you don't really determine the price then. It's kind of more up to them, up to, them to determine yeah. the price. And then they the let you know. Like the, the stock exchange from, uh, I think, Chicago and gotcha. also New York. They, they make the, the, the prices, international prices. But here also... We are learning, not we, that the small farmer is learning how to negotiate directly from a coffee shop here in Brazil. So it's pays better. Gotcha. And in the, the business. Yeah. The world. Uh, there are a very unique story here near my city. I live in a city called Maimassu. And there's a city near here called Lajinha. Uh, and there was a, a small farmer produced only coffee, in a little bit of vegetables, a little bit of chicken, and a, a pig. And there was a coffee owner from Japan in Sao Paulo, and he heard that what, there was a guy in Lajinha that he makes perfect coffees, like delicious cup of coffee. He, he uh, rents a car from Sao Paulo to La Virginia. In that, the, the time that didn't, didn't exist GPS here in Brazil already. So he went asking, he, he had an interpreter because he, he could speak English and Japanese, but he couldn't speak Portuguese. He called a friend, I don't know if he was a friend or not, but there was a guy helping him to find this city. And the city is a small city. I don't think that it has like 4,000 people. It's a very small city. Oh, wow. It, it doesn't have a bank. So gotcha. is, they have to come to my city to deal with those, those kind of things. And uh, he negotiated the price with this guy and he sell only three packages to three bags of coffee for him green coffee and uh, and he paid for them seventy thousand reais holy moly jeez for each one for each one each one wow yeah i've heard uh i was speaking to one of the farmers in peru and she was saying a lot those kind of the same thing that like you know some of the japanese clients will come and they'll literally buy out entire um, like farms and stuff. So that's just, yeah, yeah it's pretty crazy. Is, is it a Japanese company that comes in or is it just individuals that are working for, for somebody? I think it's a, it was an individual owner of a coffee shop in Japan that, that did that. And he, gotcha. uh, they all know Brazil because they like to visit their family that are here. Also, they, the Japanese families that uh, stayed here and created family. Sometimes they sent Brazilians have Brazilian have Japanese over there, and they tell everyone about how good was the coffee from Brazil, and they start coming here to look for the perfect coffee. Yeah, what what was you saying? The reason why why there were so many Japanese there? Do you know? There was or? a time here in Brazil that we didn't have an, an, enough people uh, working for the. Uh, 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 the coffee uh, coffee industry. So we need also people that ha know how to create farms and also all the the, the the parts that need to make the coffee 
get to the the cup of the consumer. Gotcha. And uh, also, we I don't know how to say that, but like Brazil and Japan has a great relationship. Even after the, the second big war, when Japan was destroyed, we also invite them, come here, we, we can stay, you can be here, be happy. You see that our land is good, produce anything that you want. So it starts coming. We paid uh, like uh, uh, ships, big ships, to go over there and bring whatever who wants. Doesn't need to pay anything. We pay everything for them. Hmm. Okay, I did not realize that. So... How many how many Japanese you say probably live there? More than a million. Yeah, I didn't realize that. That was pretty crazy. Um, so so real quick then, as far as like the coffee hunter. Um, so what are you typically looking for? Like, is there is there a certain like variety of coffee that you're kind of usually going after? Or is it or is it really depending on like a client of some sort that may have you kind of going going to look for something? Uh, the first thing that I do is go all over the internet looking for uh, uh, small farmers that are starting to work in the Instagram and Facebook trying to tell everyone that they also produce good coffee. So I'll, I'll talk to them, uh, try to learn with them what they are doing, what they are thinking, and then I schedule a meeting with them. Uh, I go over there and I look everything that I can do uh, for them to help them improve the community, the, the, the knowledge of the, what they are doing in the farm and also the internet. And I tried the, the all uh, like six, seven times I tried different time of roasting of their coffee over there and see what they are doing with that coffee. And if it's very good coffee, I'm not a key grader, but I work with a lot of key graders and they give me a lot of tips, what to look for, what to do, what to ask, what to hear, to listen. And then I pick up the green bag that I chose that was the, the great coffee that I drink from them sent to our friend that is a pre grader and also a teacher and ask him can you value this coffee for me and he do that and if it is it is like 84 or more i'll buy it for my, for myself that bag but if it's less than 40, 84 or like special coffee but or uh, gourmet coffee I'll introduce them to every coffee shop that I know from Belo Horizonte, the, the capital of the state of Minas Gerais, and in other cities that I know that has uh, coffee shops too, and like to work with very unique coffees. So, I mean, so was, when you say you buy it, do you buy like that whole little lot, like their whole whole farm, whatever they're kind of uh, growing? Uh, when I, I say I buy what, uh, just one for me, it's it's one bag. Okay, just one bag. Gotcha, gotcha. That's one bag. But <laughs> on the other bags, I offer to other people. Oh, I know the guy that has, because it's a small business, it's a small farmer. Gotcha. They produce like the total on the, the, the year, 10 bags. So I sell, I, I tell to them, I, I bought a very good bag of coffee. You, you should try it. And I'll, I'll give you the, the contact of the, the, the farmer and you guys will have a very good coffee. Gotcha. It's doing great, it's being okay. I Do also you... have with my sister that lives in Canada, a, a, a company that we created over there to receive uh, green coffees from Brazil that she can sell over there to the coffee shops in Canada. Okay, so she's kind of like a, I guess, an importer. Um, yeah, she's an importer. He, okay. Small business importer. Cool. She said to me, I don't know because I don't have the, 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 the all the information, that with the seventh uh, importer only of coffee of Canada. Okay, so she only offers it to Canada then. Uh, gotcha. For, for nowadays, yes, because she is a piano teacher. 
Okay, yeah, the gotcha. Coffee would be like a hobby. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so do you only really do coffee hunting in Brazil or do you go outside of Brazil too? No, uh, I want to visit another country, but this time it is only Brazil. Yeah. Because I, I just know how to speak very well Portuguese and English. Gotcha. And that confusing word that we have in Spanish would make me embarrassing over there. <laughs> <laughs> I hear yeah, that. Uh, sometimes it, it could get in real big trouble if you say a, a very weird word. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of... Uh, uh, the culture of each region you have to learn before you go there to make a good impression. Right. Yeah. And that's one thing too, before I go down, I really, I've been trying to learn Spanish or whatever. Um, and I definitely want to kind of learn before I go just, just for, just so you can kind of be able to communicate and understand what's going on around you and everything like yeah, that too. That's you know? important. So, yeah. So as far as like the coffee shops down there, I know you said you lived in Massachusetts. How, how long did you live up here? Five years. Five years. And was that when you was younger, like it, during school, school age? Yeah. Or? yeah. Okay. I was younger the first time. And we, we had to return to Brazil because we didn't get on time the green card. Gotcha. Then we received the green card when we returned to stay a long time to see if we like it or not. I enjoy it. The, 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 the culture? No, not, not the culture, the, the weather. It's oh, very, the weather. Yeah. Every, every station of the year. Like, yeah. Summer is very oh, every hot. season. Yeah, yeah, you every get all season. the seasons. Yeah. yeah, right. Because here in Brazil, we have just two. We have the winter. When I say winter, it's it's hot with rain. And we have uh, summer. It's very hot without rain. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like Louisiana. We have two seasons, too. It's either kind of mild, coolish in the winter, and then very hot in the summer, and it's always raining. So yeah, and over there in Massachusetts, we could see every every oh, single. Oh yeah, season. yeah. It gets, that, it gets cold up there. Yeah, and and I thought, oh, this is amazing. This is another planet because we really always learn that those two. We have also the all, all station every season, but yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference here. Difference here. Yeah. How is the politics down there with coffee? Um, it sounds like they're they're pretty good, you know, as far as like the institutions and stuff helping out and like the. Um... Yeah, yeah. There, there are, there's a low interest in loan some money for the coffee producers here in Brazil, and uh, it helps especially when the crop is very. Uh, uh, like I said, that the the, the hill at the end, of the word that you said to me. Yeah, the hill. The hail. Yeah. Can you tell me how to write hail? Yeah, it says H A I L. Hail. Okay. Now I won't forget. Yeah. Especially when you have like a hail that destroys every plant, and it has a, a, a very big loan for the community of small business, like billions of reais, and help them in the sad year that not, not, it, it will, nothing will flourish. Gotcha. So it helps. And uh, the percentage of how much it has to pay is less than a normal loan that you got from the bank. Okay, like, so y'all's interest rates and stuff are pretty good on. Yeah, ag, very, would be very, probably very an good. ag loan then. Yeah, and, and you if you prove that also you need like uh, a tractor, like equipment, like uh, uh, a a big truck, it also uh, the the price of those products it's lower for you if you are a producer and if you are a serious producer gotcha you have to show them that you are doing right and respecting the 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 the, the forest the rivers the community and it makes you a, a very big amount of they loan you a very big amount of money it's gotcha. very interesting but few people don't 
know how to do that because they don't know how, most of them don't know how to read or write. And the knowledge is passed by information. Oh, really? Oh, you can receive a loan if you do that, that, that. And they go to the bank and the, the, the manager that works with the loan for the, the uh, agriculture and have to explain very detailed and very slow uh, steps so that they can understand. Gotcha. So is the literacy rate is, is pretty low kind of in certain regions? Very low. Like you, uh, if you've got a loan, for the, you would pay 2% a year. A normally one, it's like 5% a month. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty. So yeah, as far as interest rates, and that, that's definitely pretty low. Do y'all have like insurance and stuff? Yes, like if- we also do that. The, the banks offer the, 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 the insurance, especially when they know with the weather, it's uh, showing that the, the year will be very unique, very hard year. Yeah. And it helps also because it, it, it says that uh, what the weather said, is, it came true. Gotcha. So yeah, it's important that's definitely, also for them. Yeah, it's definitely one thing that it seems like Brazil, uh, you know, has a lot more under control is like the finance, the logistics, the infrastructure, and then just kind of like the insurance and stuff like that. Because I don't the, know, talk, I, I talking. The, um, the big problem is the bureaucracy. We have good ideas or great ideas, but to get there, we have a, a lot of steps. Like you can get a loan, like uh, signing your name, like three times in three different documents, like that. But the bank says you have to sign 15 documents and it will be ready for you to take the loan, like in two months. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. the, it's not, not the, the, the manager fault, it's the policy that the government said how to do. Yeah. That they have to take. Honestly, Phil, we're getting to that point now, too, because it's so hard to get anything and just the amount of time you waste trying to get a loan or anything like that. It's just like nothing's fast. You're, nothing's happening in a week or two weeks. I mean, it takes weeks and weeks now to get anything pushed through. Yeah. Um, and yeah. That, and that the producer needs now the money. Right. Not exactly. Two months from now. It's now. Please help us. Right. Yeah, getting getting that financing quick is kind of where I feel a lot, you know, because a lot of times like the opportunities there and you need it now, you don't have two, three, four, five weeks to wait for, you know, a bank to go through the whole approval process. And by that yeah. time, the opportunity is gone, you know. And sometimes they, they the, the producer, coffee producer, mm-hmm. passed like uh, in seven as a steps or he was approved in seven steps. Then in the last step, Weird reason, like you didn't show how much was the price of the coffee when your father was alive. Get denied. So denied. Yeah. So why do we have to show something like that? There's no reason for that. Exactly. He's dead already. He, he, I can't ask him how much was the price. Yeah. Like, no, it's, it's weird. So can so can the farmers down there? I know you said like the uh, literacy literacy rate. I guess is pretty. Um, you said it's kind kind of low, like as far as like people knowing how to read and, and write down there. Can a farmer make it on like a, a decent sized little farm as far as like coffee, or do they have to have other crops in there with with it? Uh, when you want uh, live by the the land, how we say here, uh, of, you have the land like you. In, you have got out your you sustain from the land, right? Right. And thank you for God, everybody say like that, that we can also plant in the, between the, the, the streets of uh, coffee trees, anything that the, the altitude permits. Okay. So between the coffee streets, we say that like coffee streets. We have yeah. any kind of crop like beans, uh, corn. Uh, we have also weed. Weed. 
Bart is 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 the the. You about lettuce? No, pea. Peas. Peas. Yes, the Peas. the green one. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little green balls. Okay. Yeah, you put in the salad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Peas. We can put peas, and we put also peanuts. Okay. All kinds of peanuts. Yeah. And in the the gardening near the house of the the producer, we plant vegetables and fruits, like any kind of fruit. We can do Indian avocado. Have you seen Indian avocado? I haven't. We, I mean, the only thing we really see up here is like the Haas avocados. The, the, um, the, the small one, the Mexican one? Yeah, mostly it's from Mexico. Sometimes you may see some from like Colombia maybe, but most of the time it's Mexico or California. Here we have from India. Oh, I really? Oh, we got the Indian one, but it's very cool because it's like three or four times the size of the... the, the Mexican one. I'm going to have to look that up because that may grow because we can grow them here, but they don't have many on a tree. You know, it's like, you know, we, we can't, it, they don't produce that well. You can grow them, but uh, I'm going to have to look up the India one because that one may actually grow down and here. It, it's something very different from here in Brazil. Our salad of avocado, we put sugar. We don't put salt. Oh, wow. Okay. And we also drink as a vitamin. Really? Yeah, a huge cup of vitamin of avocado we drink. It's delicious. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, my wife, she's a she's she's mixed or whatever. She, I mean, they make they put avocado in everything. You know, she, she makes burritos, she does, guacamole, the everything. Indian one, make a vitamin and take a picture and send me. Yeah, I'm glad to do that. So I'm I'm definitely gonna look up the Indian ones too because uh they may actually grow here. So I'm gonna try to try to grow well, some. We, we also plant in the, the streets too. Too, uh, it's a uh, papaya. Papa, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's we like the... a lot of papaya too. Okay. In Brazil, the, the altitude interferes just in the crop of uh, coffee. The others will be safe, so we can uh, get the crop of those things and sell in the market, or, but in the local market. And then we make money or we change. I have two kilos of beans. Can you give me two chickens or uh, a little pig? So, so y'all, so y'all, do y'all barter much down there? Yeah, something like that. But uh, it, it's when you live like far, far away from the city, like gotcha. 200 kilometers from the city. Okay. Do you roast too? Because I saw you had like a little roaster on your Instagram and everything. Yeah, I have a, a, a little a, a little experience. Okay. Roasting coffee, but I still have to learn much more. But I I I, I don't make a, a a mess with the coffee. But I prefer just choosing a good coffee and drinking it. Yeah. I have a little little experience with that. Do they have any like good, you know, kind of roasteries down there? Or is that something that's kind of coming on with the, you we, know, we younger have generation? Big, and... big, uh, industries here that produces big uh, roasting machines. We have Probat here in Brazil. Okay. We have another one called Carmo Mac. In, and we have uh, the third biggest of Brazil that it's from my friends and I work with them, but not uh, as a. Uh, as a worker that works and receives from them. I work with them, learning from them, and also giving them information that I learned by myself, and we exchange information. Okay. And gotcha. that, it's called Achilla. Achilla. Okay, yeah, I think that's the one I saw on your Instagram. Yeah, the, the Achilla is because the, the father of the family loved history, and he loves Achilla the human. Okay. You know that the, the guy from the Europe, he was a warrior that liked to kill everyone. Who was in the history. oh, oh Attila, you talking about Attila the Hun? We call him a, yeah. Attila over here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it's named after. Yes, he, <laughs> he loved that guy. He said he think he's so cool. That's that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, I think he was uh during the Roman period or whatever. I think he yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. Kinda... The Romans was afraid of them. Of yeah, them. Attila the yeah. Hun. Yep, the Huns. Yeah, that's a that's cool. I was wondering because I, I I noticed that that roaster had that name, and I was like, I didn't I didn't even dream it would have any 
some you know com- comparison or similarities to that so that's funny um last thing i kind of had small small companies that are very very small so like that, that here in my city you know where i am now but not my city it's city of my my father where he lives we have like four other industries but it's very small it, they are learning how to do also the the the, the, the machine gotcha okay and copy everyone yeah that's pretty cool so I guess the last thing I want to dive into is um, as far as like the certifications, like the uh, Rainforest Alliance and stuff like that, because I know Brazil has like, I mean, y'all have a huge portion of the rainforest, um, if I'm not mistaken, with uh, yeah. the Amazon and everything like that. Part of Amazon forest is in Brazil. Yeah. So how is that helping? Like, do you do you, like do you know much about the Rainforest Alliance, like certifications and organic certifications and all that? And like, does that even really do you see it's promoting or helping anything down there? Sometimes it does. We see the, the change of the, the mentality and the behavior of the producers changing for that uh, uh, goal. They want to have those certifications to achieve new countries. But that small one, they don't know what it is they don't care and also they not afford to have that because they produce to live not to 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 make how they how they say it's like that i don't want to produce it to make uh, someone in japan happy gotcha I, i need to produce to sustain my family right i'm doing something different to make someone somewhere over the other side of the country, the, the, the world happy. But the first thing that I want is money to stay in my family. I don't know what the term would be. Do you, do you pay into any of those or do you have any certifications like that or no? No, no, I'm, I'm very small. Yeah. I am I'm, uh, I'm still uh, uh, helping my father because he is the one that is uh, uh, trying to make a, uh, interesting crop because the, all the others that are in front of me are very big and very uh, huge and have a lot of amount of money. You to to if you want to be be big, you have to have a lot of money. Gotcha. You know, all the the machines, all the workers, all the the, the certifications cost a lot of money. Yeah. So as far as the land down there, do y'all own it or is it like, I mean, do y'all have land ownership or is it owned by like the government or something like that? Or, or how, how does that work? Uh, the, those institutes that I told you, they sometimes they have the land and they try all the technology, all the science knowledge that they have in those areas. Okay. But most of the part, everyone has their own land. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of how it is up here, too, because I know, like, LSU, um, one of the colleges up here, they have their ag center, which has, like, some land that they also farm and do experiments and whatever on. But, um, yeah, for the most part, the land around here is pretty much privately owned for sugar cane. We grow a lot of sugar cane and all kinds of other stuff around here. So, um, yeah, I didn't know if it was privately owned or how, how it was down there. So, well, shoot, dude. Uh it was a good little conversation, man. I, I definitely appreciate you coming on. And do you have any uh anything you kind of want to wrap up with or anything like that? I, I said to you that I want to tell you about my family, how unique it is. Let's do it. The, <clears throat> the, the there's a side of my family that is from my uh, mother that has Spanish uh, blood, as African blood. And also Italian blood. In that side of my father, there is English blood, native blood, Indian native blood, and also Jewish blood. Oh dang! So yeah. so you got you got a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. So here in Brazil, we say that we are mixed. We. Uh, we say that when God was creating Brazil, he got a little bit of every country in the world, putting the, the, 
processor and native Brazilian. I've kind of noticed about Brazil, it seems like it's very diverse. It seems like almost everybody lives there. Like every type of person lives there. You know what I mean? You said the you have over a million Japanese that live there and stuff like that. And in the south of Brazil, we have cities that only spoke them the 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 language where they come from, like French or Italy or German, they speak their, their own language. But they know how to speak Portuguese because in the school they have to learn Portuguese. Yeah. But in the city, normally they speak their own language, Italian, French. Uh, there are a city called Little Poland in Brazil. It's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a unique place. So you said your dad's side is is what now? Retired. He's retired? Okay. Yeah. He used to be a doctor, a uh, specialist in uh, heart. Cardiologist? Cardiologist, yeah. yeah. And you can see back behind me all the books of medicine. Gotcha. I was wondering what all his books were. Yeah, and also some of them are about how to create uh, animals and farm how to create vegetables, how to create... He, love, he loves to learn new things in the farm. So he's cool. always trying new things. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, it's one of the things like me and my wife, we've been trying to learn more about, you know, just like farming, got, got a few little gardens going and stuff like that. We're going to try to get some chickens here pretty soon. And I don't know, it's like, it's one of them things like I feel, especially up here, we've kind of gotten away from the the farming aspect of things and like knowing where everything comes from and all that. Like, you know, my, my grandpa, both of my grandpas actually, you know, had, had dairy farms and it's weird you meet people and, and they don't even really know how the milk process works, you know, like taking the baby calves away. And they're like, what are you talking about? And it's like, yeah, you, you got to take the baby calf away. Cause you know, take all the milk. So. I, I remember something interesting that I, I like to share. Uh, I'm, I'm meeting a lot of women uh, that is working with specialty coffee and they are making uh, like uh, associations mm -hmm. to uh, invite people that know more than them to do the speech to show them how to do different. And one thing that I learned with them that they call the every uh, coffee tree they are uh, growing their uh, their uh, farm they call them my babies my babies heck yeah i so mean they, they treat every tree like a baby so it's different when you see a very uh, a clean bag of coffee everything is perfect you ask it's your wife who did this yes how you know because it's perfect yours <laughs> not like that Oh, that's funny so the, the, the ladies here they are doing a very good job it's amazing they are more interested in the knowledge different from the man because the man thinks i always did like this why i have to do something different you know right and the ladies are learning young people are returning to the country to learn more uh there's another thing interesting to tell you we have a, a championship here in brazil called Cup of Excellence. I've heard of that. Um, we actually have a really good roaster, French Truck Coffee, and they went down to Brazil, and they had a couple of excellence that they that they put out. And it was really good. Yeah. And one bag of the best coffee that they tasted, the value was $12,000, one bag. Twelve thousand dollars for the bag. Yeah, sixty wow. kilos. Sixty kilos. So yeah, it's about one hundred thirty-two pounds. Right. So yeah, yeah, that's that's a lot of money. Yes, it is. Jeez. So everybody Jeez. wants to participate of this because they taste the all the coffees in the table, and then they say which one was, and they start like uh, auctioning. Yeah. For who pays the best price for the best coffee, the bag. Wow. Here in my area, they did also the same thing, but it's the best of the, the region. And a lady got the bag for $3,092. $3,092. And that's, that's the same thing, a uh, 60 kilogram bag? 
Yeah, same. Okay. All, all bags here, the 60 kilos. Gotcha. You, one of the, the, the questions that you sent me, you uh, asked about the, the prices of the fertilizer, the limestone. Yeah, like the, yeah, what, what so yeah, what's that kind of look like? Um, because a lot of a lot of places yeah. like I know like Honduras and stuff they they really don't seem to use too much of like the you know pesticides and because they're so high up you know they they, they don't have to use it as much but I figured Brazil y'all probably especially being you know we, we use especially those two two things fertilizer it's a bag of 50 kilos it depends how much you have to buy to put uh, fertilizer in every coffee tree but it's about 110 pounds and the price was between 43 and 66 dollars to 45 and 85 dollars for uh, uh, because of the war in ukraine and right russia yeah, i think yeah they have a lot of the fertilizer plants i think over there yeah they, they, they are the most producers of the world they they are most produced and they were the biggest sellers for Brazil. And every now, every Monday has a new price. Every Monday. Oh wow! And it the the, the price is going up like eight dollars uh, to Monday to Monday. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, I know because we, we have like Dow Chemical. I think we got um, we actually have Monsanto over here too. We got uh, Syngenta. We got a few plans to do a lot of the fertilizers and stuff up here along the Mississippi we, we River. We have those office here, but not the 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 the, the plants. Yeah the plants not so just the office. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah I could I could definitely imagine that because a lot of the plants are up and down the Mississippi River over here. And um yeah we deal with them at my job a good bit. And uh yeah I, I knew I definitely knew that the fertilizer was definitely going to be getting kind of you know fluctuating price wise when whenever the Ukraine stuff started started happening yeah but, um, there, there's something interesting that I, I don't know if it's true or not but uh, the government said to us that the only country that uh, Russia is selling the the fertilizers that it needs for the the all crops it's Brazil because oh, wow. he didn't say nothing against Russia. He said, didn't say that he was against or for. He just, I don't say anything. Yeah. So in the, the Americas, all Americas, North, Central, and South America, Brazil is the only country that receives fertilizers. Yeah. Yeah, because I've noticed that like Dow and all the ones around here, they've been ramping up production as far as... And, and, uh, and, and, we see that the prices here in Brazil is more, uh, more than uh, the, the half of the prices, less half than the prices on the other countries. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah, because there's, and that's what's crazy too when you start thinking about like fertilizer and stuff. Like, I mean, I know, like, like I said, like down here along the Mississippi River, we produce a good bit of it, but like there's some countries that they only import fertilizer, like they don't make it. So like if it's either coming from Ukraine or the United States or somewhere, like. I mean, Canada too. Yeah, Canada too. Um, yeah, but some countries like they they're I, that's I don't know. It's just such a bad situation because like it is going up a lot, you know. Especially if you don't have the ability to ramp up production wherever you're at. Yeah, yeah. But uh, also the the government said that they are investing in plants here in Brazil. Yeah, because that's what I figured. I figured Brazil would have some. Uh, we have some, but not enough. Yeah, not them. enough. Yeah. Small amount. I envy this from you guys. Envy what? The uh, have all those plants next to each other and producing for the country. Oh yeah. But it's and again, I don't know. It's like it's like anything. It's you know, I mean, all the pollution, all the stuff around. They call it cancer alley where we live yeah, down that's here a because bad thing. very bad thing. Yeah, because I mean it's just this whole region along the Mississippi River. I think like the chances of getting cancer is like astronomical compared to like, you know, 30, 40, 50 miles out away from it. Just, just how much this region gets, gets cancer more than everybody else. But it's like one of them things is all the money flows into it. And of course people are going to, you know, they're going to work. So, you know, it's kind of like those necessary evils that you kind of got to deal with. So, 
unfortunately. Um, no, I definitely appreciate you coming on. I'm definitely going to link your IG. Uh, you definitely post a good bit of stuff on there. I, I like reading through your through, through your Instagram. Dude, I appreciate you coming on. And uh, I definitely want to get down there one day, dude. Uh, it would be a pleasure to receive you and your family. Yeah, no, I, I definitely would like to get down there and, and, and hang out and taste some coffee, roast some coffee and uh, have, we have, have a good very time. good coffees and also very good cuisine. Oh, y'all have, y'all have some pretty good food down there too? The best one. Yeah, that's what I hear. Brazil has some good, uh, good, good taste in meat and stuff like that. So there's, yeah. there's another thing cool in Brazil that it's the second largest country that consumes pizza. The first one, it's United States. Second one, it's Brazil. Really? Yeah. I did not realize that. That's crazy. We That's have cool. all kind of cool pizzas and weird pizza. We have the weird one that I know. It's like uh, ice cream pizza. Ice cream pizza. I've never heard of that. I will say, like, you know, I'm, I'm definitely Americanized to pizza. Because when I went to Italy and I got pizza, I didn't like you it. You asked for the ketchup? Yeah, I was just it 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 was so small, it was so thin, you know. It wasn't like that Chicago deep dish, you know what I mean? Yeah. It like it was just not what wasn't for me. So I I uh I'm not really too much on Italian pizza, but you know, such is life. So dude, did, I appreciate did you, did you try to ask for ketchup? No, I didn't ask for any ketchup. I, I was already getting getting enough looks or whatever with the sparkly water and all that. And it's like, man, I just <laughs> want some regular water, you know what I mean? So uh, uh, once my mother was visiting Italy, she asked for the ketchup and she was invited to leave the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, you definitely got to watch what you ask for over there. Yeah, so. it's weird. They don't want to teach you how to eat the pizza. They want you to already know how to eat the pizza in their yeah. own way. Oh, yeah. But yeah. for me, you can eat pizza the way you like to eat pizza. Exactly. That's the way I kind of look at it. It's a pleasure. Too. Exactly. So, we heck have, yeah, we have also coffee pizza, okay? A coffee pizza? Yeah. We're going to have to invent that. They got it down there? Yeah. Well, a restaurant tried those things, but I don't know if it made success, but it, it was for like a month they tried. Really? Oh, you're being yeah. serious. Okay. We have chocolate with uh, coffee beans. You I, I, buy yeah. chocolate and inside there yeah. chocolate. We definitely, uh, I've definitely tried that before, but I haven't tried pizza and pizza and coffee. Uh, I might have to, I might have to tell somebody about that one. So, yeah, heck yeah. Uh, there's another unique one that I don't know if you know. You know, uh, sugar cane juice. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of it here. Yeah, no, so probably you guys wanna will will be able to do that. You boil the coffee juice. Don't know the sugar cane juice and you prepare a pet i don't know how to say it uh, brew brew yeah bro, bro, uh, coffee cup of coffee with oh dude I bet, that, I bet that would be good yeah but uh, uh it will be sweet but it's the sweetness of the coffee juice or the, the cane, yeah sugar cane juice sugar cane dude i'm i actually may make a youtube video on that and uh i may give you credit for that one Sugar cane and coffee. Here is done by the old people because they they don't like the 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 uh, industrialized sugar. Yeah, so I don't they, either. They do the the sugar the most natural possible with the juice of the sugar cane. Yeah, because like everything has corn syrup or you know yeah. the corn syrup in and stuff now, so. So is the sugar cane and coffee like? Is that kind of like something that's pretty popular down in Brazil? We have a uh, not so popular. Like it's the old people in the farms in the small cities inside the country. Okay, I may make a YouTube video on that and kind of just just showcase that a little bit. I think that'd be pretty cool. It, so. it, it's very interesting to taste that. Yeah, but I, I still prefer special coffee without nothing, just the sweetness of the coffee. Oh yeah. No, I definitely do too. So, well, I don't know. I, I definitely like sugar cane. I never yeah, really I thought about. You should try. You should yeah, try. I've never, I never thought about mixing sugar. Maybe you, you, you will uh, uh, make your own big company called Sugar Cane Coffee, and you'll be famous. 
you never know. I mean, that's kind of like the coconut water stuff they can <laughs> they have up here, you know. So, and I want ten percent of the the profit. I'll 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 send it down right after I get my first million. So, <laughs> uh, Andre, man, I appreciate you coming on, and uh, yeah, definitely want to come down there and check check you out, and I'll link all your stuff below as far as your IG and everything, and uh, yeah, stay in touch, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate. It was an honor to be here, and I think you're gonna be more successful than you think. I appreciate that. Thank you, buddy. God bless you and your family. You too, my friend. Thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Coffee Runs Deep podcast. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you'd like to reach out to Andre, I will link his Instagram and all that below. Please leave a review if you so desire to do so, and I will see you next week.